guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Serial at Midnight. This is a special edition, an Australian uh, New Arrivals special edition. Here's the deal. It's the day after Christmas. I'm recording this December 26th. My videos are done, like I've done for the year, you know, kind of in that post-holiday, or really holiday season uh, downtime. And uh, the missus and I, Bree and I, have been out all day just running day after Christmas errands come back to a stack of deliveries from Australia Post. Uh, we got two from Umbrella and one from ViaVision, which is imprint, right? So I was like, okay, let's let's check these out together on camera. Let's just do an unboxing video and see what's in the box. So we got one shot at this. I have started to cut now, so this is happening. Whether it's good or bad, this is what's going on. Woo-hoo-hoo! These aren't numbered in any way, so show me your moves. The FP collection. Show me your moves. Show me your... Oh, look at that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. What do we got here? This is... Uh, there's the back. I don't know. You guys have to tell me if this is better than what we normally do, where I kind of unbox this stuff first and see what it is and like try to read up on it. Uh, this is number 80 of 300, only available from the Umbrella Web Store. The FP Collection Collector's Edition includes custom designed rigid case. That's that. Uh, custom artwork slipcase. The FB Collection book, 48 page perfect bound book, put together in conjunction with the director, Jason Trust. Uh, eight art cards. A3 reversible poster, limited edition number release. You guys see all the special features here? Let's do it. Let's check it out. Why do I smell it? You know, because one of the things that I think people like you and me, I'll speak for myself. I know it's true about some of you guys. Uh, the tactile engagement of these editions, like one of the reasons we collect physical media is because of the tactile elements of it. And smell is such a strong trigger, right? And um, what was I just unboxing? Was it the talk to me hand? And I was like, oh, that styrofoam. Like I just had a smell memory and it smells like, Unboxing a Nintendo in 1987. This is, like there's a lot of um, like very anime style. You know what? I'm just gonna go for these. I was trying to look at them ahead of time. If there's something that can't be here, we're not live. I can just edit it out. Let's put a black frame here. And be like, sorry. But <laughs> by the way, the thumbnail for this. I don't know what I ended up going with. It's always funny though, because you try to do, you have to convey so much information in a YouTube thumbnail. Because th honestly, the thumbnail is the, the thing that's going to decide if somebody clicks or not. Like, oh, I'll do this later. You can, you can come up with something in the text that might get them, but it's really, they're looking at that thumbnail. And so I, you try to try to convey curiosity. So I'm like, hmm, what's in these boxes? Because I really didn't know. Ooh. What's the reversible art? Is it okay? It's the front. It's it's this, but without that rating certificate. Beats of rage, and we are moving on to Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions. Very cool. I know the horror fans are really excited about this one. What do we got here? We got, here, hold that up. There's a little bit of like a film. It's okay. Here, let me get this out of this. The shrink wrap has, it's hazy. Yeah, that's much better. Here's the clean, here's the front. Here's the back. This looks like a, a residue on my hands. All right, hold on. Freeze it, because we're not going to read all of that. What number did I get? 293 out of 500. Remember, these are the website exclusives. You can save 15% on your order at the Umbrella Web Store by using code SERIAL15. Uh, but they do have different options for these. If you just want the film, that's going to be an option for you. Go ahead and think I can flip this around. Yes. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I don't know if I should do that because this has 
you know, the back of the box has, or this has a description of the, of the movie. If I flip it around, what is this an, a note from Clive Barker? Yeah. A, um, a letter from Clive Barker from 1995. Ooh. That's cool. I always love these, like, it's like a half sheet style. All right, let's do it. Sweet. And then uh, here's our booklet, our perfect bound book. Woo. Such Magical Sights by Phil and Sarah Stokes. This is not a gross-out story like Hellraiser, nor is it a monster movie like Nightbreed. It is a tale of dark magic. You guys, this essay is dense. This is all oh my Chapter 1, pre-production. Holy macaroni. Chapter 2, Principal Photography. This is just straight up a book. There's like no photos in here. There is a... Okay, there's a photo. It's like the ticket from the premiere screening. Whoo! Andrew Netty. Flesh is a trap and magic sets us free. Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions and Private Investigators and the Occults on Film. Red Rock West. Oh my goodness. When this was announced, I was like, I'm sorry, what? It is a stone cold neo-noir classic. Nicolas Cage... And it's been obscure these days. So hopefully this is the beginning of uh, justice for Red Rock West. Okay, here's the... Whoo. You guys? I'm excited about this. Ooh, okay. Hey, should I do the... Should we take this off? Because I didn't do that. Uh, I got number 209 out of 300... Full of playful twists and sexy turns, Red Rock West is perfectly pl is a perfectly plotted game of cat and mouse that will keep you guessing until the final shocking shot. Got, uh, well, you just saw. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Nice, we've got the original art that I associate with this film. Nicholas Cage, Dennis Hopper, Laura Flynn Boyle, John Dahl. Ooh. I might have to find a place for that. You guys, so many of these mini posters reviewing movies and showing movies off here for seven years. I've got so many of these mini posters, but this, this, this needs to go up somewhere. For those of you who are old enough to remember the video store days, do you remember when you would go, like, they'd have the the um, the posters all over the doors and the windows of the video store? I think that's, we're all chasing that, right? That's one of the, that's another reason we do what we do. Man, Let's see what we got in this book. Notes from the press kit. Welcome to Red Rock by Alexandra Heller Nicholas. Right. Get somebody that knows noir to talk about this movie. Rebel with a Cause. Notes of Appreciation by Philippe Mora. Traveling the Lost Highways of 1990s American Neo Noir by John Harrison. Okay, this might have just shot straight to the top, the best of the year list. It's not a best of the year because that's totally, like, I don't think people should say best of the year, favorites of the year because it's totally subjective, right? So let's do this. Let's. Come on. <laughs> All right, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to pop that back on deal with it later somebody told me the other day they were like they they, they email me or they maybe they commented like you got to get that off as soon as you can because it's going to mess up the this is lord of illusions 
like Lord, they're like it's gonna um, mess up the finish on the box. Like as soon as I'm done, I, I do take that off. But for the sake of our purposes here, I want to leave it there. So you, again, the point of these videos is not for me to brag about. Look what people sent me from Australia. It's to give you a hands-on view of what uh, what you're going to get if you order these things. You know what what's out there. Like I am the messenger, so you can spend your money wisely. All right, here's our second umbrella unboxing. Ooh, stigmata and monkey shines, and then rib spreader with extra stuff. So let's let's do monkey shines. Uh, what number? I got number one forty-eight out of four hundo. Freeze it. I remember these ads from the video store day, or a video store era, back in the video store day, you know what I'm talking about? Not, not like there's a video store day like record store. Is there a video store day like record store day? I'm guessing clean artwork on the other side of this. Yep. I mean, that's really iconic imagery. <laughs> so is that. It's like, is that okay? All right, here's our book. An experiment in fear. Another, this is another one with a lot of, uh, a lot of text. I guess it makes sense. Lee Gambin is a writer. All right. Next up is Stigmata. So this movie came out around the same time as End of Days. I think End of Days was 98 maybe. And it was one of those films that was challenging to the church community. And I remember, uh, feeling, I don't know worried about watching it. I don't know if that's the right word. Just, you know, aware, aware that I was watching it and what I was doing was not necessarily okay with the religious institution. 148 out of 300. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff here. Okay. Here's our booklet. Here's the cards. Oh, hold on. Let's do the back of this. Let's do this. Clean. Yep. I am a uh, huge Patricia Arquette fan. The older I get, the more I appreciate Patricia Arquette as like, not that it's a competition. She's probably my favorite of the Arquettes. I don't like, she's just, I mean, true romance, right? Like true romance. And then if you still aren't in love with her after that, I don't know. All right. I should also mention uh, Dream Warriors, right? Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Dream Warriors. Sidebar, while I'm showing you guys these art cards, I've got a Dokken Live DVD. I think it's Dokken Live 95 is maybe what it's called. I've got it on DVD. I think it's in a sleeve. I think I sleeved it because it was taking up shelf room. And I was like, that doesn't need to be on the shelf. And they do, it's like backstage. There's an acoustic performance of uh, 
Dream Warriors, and it is amazing. Sounds so good acoustic. They, I don't think they ever released that commercial like that as a single or anything like that. So I, at one point I had ripped it and like created my own MP3. It's on YouTube, of course. Of course it's on you. I mean, I think it is. I've actually never looked. It's probably on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to leave this to the front. Should just show you the front. Ah, you know what? Just do that. <laughs> Can you guys see that? Is that focusing? Uh, let's see. A new killer stalks the streets of Murder City. Special features full-length audio commentary with writer, producer, director Dick Dale, cinematographer Hugh Freytag, and star Tommy Darwin. And making a feature, some random <laughs> visual effects with Rob Englander featurette. Uh, a lot of stuff there. We have this got reversible, yeah, reversible art wrap with the clean art on the front. What are they? What's the what's the problem? This R eighteen high Im high impact blood and gore, guys. High impact. Oh, this is the alternate slip cover, or I don't know if it's an alternate. Okay, I have a slip cover. That's what this is. This is not art cards. This is a slip cover. A new killer is stubbing out smokers on the streets of Murder City. If the cigarettes don't kill you, he will. All right, let's do this. Well, hold on, I'm gonna put the poster in the in the disc in a second can I show all this all right band in Queensland right yeah band in Queensland Trashorama Films presents a Dick Dale film I don't think it's the same Dick Dale surf rock surf guitar legend I don't think it's that Dick Dale of course if I discover I'm wrong after the fact I'll have put it right here. It's smart business to sell things like this directly from your web store because you're cutting out the middleman. And we know that, like, so you guys remember, I'm going to talk while I'm opening this package from ViaVision. You guys remember I did that live stream uh, a few weeks back when it seemed like Sony was pulling out of uh, Australia. And there's also the news that JB Hi-Fi seems to have discontinued discs in 2024 and uh, first of all, the story about Sony pulling out of Australia, immediately after that live stream, Australians woke up and were like, what are you talking about? They just switched into a different distributor. You got a whole, like, I felt so embarrassed. I was just trying to cover it. I was just trying to stay out in front of the story and be like, stop, don't panic. <sighs> all right. First of all, let's take a moment to acknowledge how well packaged this is. This is from ViaVision. These are imprint releases. They know that imprints is a premium product and they... I mean, bubble wrapped to the nines. <laughs> so, so well bubble wrapped, I can't even get it out, right? Like, look at, look at all, look. I don't think that's just for me because I'm an influencer. I don't think it's just because of that. I think that they're, whoo, whoo, whoo. I think it's, they're taking care of their people. Taking care of their customers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. Put that right there. Put that right there. There's more. Assignment K. Ooh, Dead Heat on a Merry-Go-Round. I've slurred that. Dead Heat on a Merry-Go-Round. Dead Heat on a Merry-Go-Round. Uh, oh, The Man in the Half Moon Street. Man in Half Moon Street and uh, Diamond Head. Ah, oh, okay. Here's our order. So let's start with Essential Film Noir Collection Five. We've covered every imprint release to date here, including imprint television, including these noir sets. In fact, they're probably a lot of them are behind me. Okay, here, hold that up for you. Oh, that didn't come off so good. That is, you know what? That's really on there. I have to deal with that later. I'll deal with you later. Go to your room. 262. Peter Lorre, Island of Doomed Men. There's no special features on this. The Red Menace. I 
think I've got a copy of this maybe from somebody else. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, oh, here, I'll just do this. Sometimes I forget how I've watched the movie, especially since I've started to embrace digital for things that I either can't buy physically or that is, uh, just, you know, just kind of lose track of how I, how I came to certain things. The Burglar. Okay, I always thought his name was Dan Durea. C. Courtney Joyner calls him Dan Duria. That's probably better. That's probably right. So Dan Duria, trying to tra train myself to say it differently. Uh, Jane Mansfield and Martha Vickers. We've got um, an introduction by Martin Scorsese. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I love a lot of Scorsese's films. There's a few I don't connect with. I love a lot of Scorsese's films, but Scorsese, the film lover, is my favorite Scorsese. I love how much he loves movies. Uh, this is the last one of the box set. This is 13 West Street. Alan Ladd, uh, Rod Steiger. Let's check out the inside here. What year is this? 1962. Oh, interesting to include a, a 60, 1962 movie in a, a noir box set. Because... Why, let me explain myself. Because certain people will argue that the classic years of noir end with 1958 and that anything after 1958 is a neo-noir. Uh, we put a lot of rules, you know, the, the cinema establishment puts a lot of rules on, on these things. Ultimately, we should probably just be watching them and talking about them. And I'll pull the curtain back even further. Every time I talk about noir here, someone says, that's not film noir. You know, if you'd studied, if you'd read the books, if you'd listened to Eddie Muller, really, uh, everybody tells you what it isn't. They're not talking about the movies, which I think is ironic. Tales of Adventure Collection 2. I'm really excited about this. Tales of Adventure, I mean, this is, you guys know me, right? This is me all over. Uh, this is me noir genre film like this this is my bread and butter this is my jam um the only way this could be better is if there was a commentary from me on one of these releases hey maybe maybe for number three we can get me on one of these um and in case anybody from imprints watching this i've done six audio commentaries in the last uh for 2023 i've done six audio commentaries and i would love to contribute one to a release like this uh the first uh, tales of adventure box set was like desert adventure movies because of Middle Eastern, Arabian adventure, that kind of a thing, mid-century Arabian film, that, you know, that exotic, you know, uh, these are jungle, jungle, uh, jungle pictures is what they are from, let's see, 48 to 56, that classic mid-century, like right in the sweet spot there. Ooh, well, hold on. First of all, let's do this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You guys, this, oh, this just ripped the cardboard. These are really on there. Can I, mm. all right, I'm gonna have to deal with this later. That ripped that one too. All right, you get, a, you get the picture, literally. I don't know if that's gonna go back on, nope. So I'll put it inside the box. All right. Angel uh, on the Amazon, build with Daughter of the Jungle. It's a double feature. Two films. I'm guessing on the other side of this is going to be the artwork for Daughter of the Jungle. Well, hold on. Audio commentary by Phil, uh, Philip Berry and audio commentary by Gary Girani. Hold on. This one's from, they're both from the 4K scans of the 35 millimeter nitrates. Who are these licensed from? Republic, the Republic Pictures. I love Republic Pictures. I'm doing like a Gene Autry thing right now too, but that's that's another video for another time. But I'm like going, I'm doing a deep dive on Gene Autry at Republic, and then later at Columbia. Fair Wind to Java. 4K scan of the three strip True Color negative. This is another Republic Pictures title. Audio commentary by Sam Deegan. Whew. 
my man Fred. You know what I love about Fred McMurray is that he could do everything. Like we champion Jimmy Stewart, or, I'm sorry, James Stewart. We champion um, Gary Cooper, I guess. Fred McMurray, like the dad on My Three Sons, but he's also in a bunch of noir films. He's in Westerns. He plays a good guy. He plays a bad guy. He's in an adventure film, jungle adventure film. He really could do just about anything. Uh, Elephant Walk. Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, Do you guys know Elizabeth Taylor did uh, a movie like this? Dana Andrews, Peter Finch. Uh, what do we got here? Audio commentary by Gary Girani. And Safari. Victor Mature, Janet Lee, John Justin, Roland Culver. That is, look at that. That is great. That is really cool. I feel like that's the cover of a Martin Denny Exotica album or something. Next up, Assignment K. By the way, you guys know uh, Imprint always puts these on the shrink wrap so that when you unwrap it, it's clean. Also, somebody's going to ask. They always ask, even when I say. So I don't know why I say. But somebody's going to ask. Uh, are those region locked? Are those region B? Every imprint release to date has always been region, region free. You play them anywhere. In any region. Because they're servicing the world. Uh, Steve Boyd, Camilla Sparv, Michael Redgrave, Leo McKern. Okay, let's see. No special features on this. I don't believe I've ever seen this before. And in case you're like, how do you not know? Listen, man. Listen, man. You see as many movies as I do. Sometimes I'll pop one in and be like, all right, this just showed up. Let me check this out. And I'm like... I've seen this and I just totally forgot about it. I know that's why we have Letterboxd, but I don't. <laughs> the time I could write something for Letterboxd, I could be watching something else. Uh, Data Heated on a Merry-Go-Round. It's a good movie. It's got, uh, so James Coburn is great. Um, who is, the, I'm trying to remember who the, uh, Camilla Sparve. Aldo Ray. Aldo Ray? Aldo. Um, what do we got here? No special features here either. Should I pull back the curtain? I'm gonna okay. Hopefully this doesn't get me in too much trouble. I don't I, mean, I can't imagine it would. So I've become friends with Max Allen Collins, the crime writer who created Quarry and Nathan Heller, you know, and Road to Perdition. That's probably what I should have led with. The guy who wrote created Road to Perdition. You think about the awesome Tom Hanks movie um, with uh, Paul Newman. Like that's an adaptation of source material from Max Allen Collins. And so we talk sometimes, he's going to, he'll be here on the show soon. But I was like, you know, I watched Dead Heat on the Merry-Go-Round and uh, it's good. Like, it's not great. It's good. It's solid. It's a good, solid movie. And it, my memory is that he was like, I saw that in the theater. That's a great film. And I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Yes, sir. When Max Allen Collins tells you something's a great, a great film, just go, okay, you're right. You're right. Diamond Head. Charlton Heston. It's people. Okay. Uh, Yvette, I, I'm always self-conscious about how I say that name, so I'm not going to say it. And you guys have helped me multiple times, but uh, I'm never sure if I'm remembering correctly. George Shakiris, that's cool. Uh, France Nguyen, France Nguyen. Uh, James Darren. No special features on this either. I'm just realizing now that the thumbnail, you know, I, I recorded the boxes with like the surprise, like the, hmm, the curious face. I think I should ditch that production on the fly and like just hold all these up and let that be the thumbnail and people like, because the box isn't going to draw you in like all these colorful, beautiful Blu-rays that smell good are going to draw you in. Uh, let's see. 
the man in Half Moon Street. One man was the lover or murderer. Nils Aster, Helen Walker, totally unfamiliar here. Tim Lucas commentary. A scientist discovers that he can live forever by receiving gland transplants every 10 years. Unfortunately, the unwilling donors must be killed for him to, to survive. That sounds like a universal principle. It's a universal movie. Um, something that doesn't bother the scientist until he falls in love. Uh, oh, it's a Paramount picture. Okay. You see, I saw the universal logo down here, but we must remember people are like, okay, yes, I know. I know. Universal bought a ton of Paramount films. I think it was it's several hundred films. Uh, pretty much at the dawn of the television era to pad out their, you know, to pad out their catalog for licensing to TV for, for, you know, that. And, uh, many times you'll see, so, so now there's hundreds of Paramount films controlled by Universal, which is the case here. I'm just glad that movies like this get a home on, uh, physical media. Oh, that's good. That looks good. Get it real close to the camera. I lean over. What? Yeah. Okay. So thanks to the, these uh, these distributors. Thanks to you guys for sticking through this coverage, for just being here, geeking out with me about movies. Clearly, I love this stuff. Uh, I don't know when this is going to hit the channel. Probably pretty soon because why not, right? Uh, but I hope that you have or are having a great holiday season and support, you know, if you're if you see something here that you're interested in, support these companies. They need it more than ever. The physical media landscape, the movies, home, home video landscape is constantly changing. Uh, and these companies really do need our support, especially if companies like JB Hi-Fi are going to step back from carrying this stuff in stores. It's more important than ever that we support these, these, uh, distributors at the, you know, through their own sites and, and interfaces. So, uh, thanks. This is a, this is great. I'm feeling, <laughs> feeling grateful and unsure how to end this video. Right. So I appreciate you guys. Take care until next time. I will just like slap the glass. I will catch you later.